Welcome to this week's episode of Trista's Plate Story Podcast. I'm Trista Polo from IWokeUpAwesome.com, and I am your host. Each week, we learn the story behind that vanity plate. You know the one you saw driving down the road? What did it say? What did it mean? Why did they choose it? Welcome. I'm excited today to have Brandy Cambrick with us from Houston, Texas. Welcome, Brandy. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm excited. Now, your license plate, Endeavor, it's actually N-D-E-V-O-R. Correct. And that's a Texas plate. Can you tell us the yeah. story behind why you chose it? So that is, it, it goes back to my sorority. So I am a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. It's one of the nine Black Greek letter organizations. We comprise the National Panhellenic Council. So Endeavor is actually the name that was given to me by the young lady who was taking me through the process to join my sorority. So the the way the process works is we, as a group, we come in, we go through a, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, a vetting process to make sure that at the time we have the grades, the GPA, the, the community service, just what they're looking for, for the organization. And the group of us, we come together, we're on a line or a class. And then each of us, based on our personalities, our behaviors, the attributes that we display going through the process, our leader, for lack of a better phrase, she gives us a name at the end of our process. And my name was Endeavor. That's awesome. So do you know why that was the name you were given? The way she explained it was that no matter what task she gave us, the way she said it, I endeavored to make sure that it was completed. So I did whatever was necessary, rallied to keep the team together to get it done and make sure it was done properly. Wow, that's a good name. It is. (laughs) Yeah. When you got the name and the reason behind it, did it resonate with you? Did you see like where she was coming from? (laughs) (laughs) To be honest, no. Because at the time I'm like, I'm what, 21, 22 years old. So I'm thinking I'm going to get like some edgy name or some kind of like really cool name. And she gave me that one. I'm like, "Eh, okay. Um, Can I have a retake? (laughs) (laughs) I really didn't get it at first, but Mm. the more, like even after we became members and I got my letters and we joined the org, it kind of, yeah, I could see it. I could see what she was saying because once we went through, it was me and I had three other line sisters. So we had a very small line. But once we became members, we set out on an ambitious plan. Like we said, okay, we're going to complete every national project that the sorority has in one school year. And we did it. And we said, no matter what, like if we had classes, tests, projects, whatever, we worked around it to get it done. So through that, I'm like, okay, now I see it. I see why she said that. And even to this day, I still see why she says that. And so the name does now resonate with. That's awesome. I was just actually going to look it up. So endeavor is to attempt something by exertion of effort to strive to achieve or reach. (laughs) Yep. To work with set purpose. (laughs) So how do you see that in yourself today? How does that translate into who you are today as a professional? And are you a mom? I am a mom. Yes. And a mom. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, wow. And so many did like, it's just as a mom, I was a single parent. So it was, it was tough because I'm a single parent and then I'm working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I work in retail. So I had a lot of that going on. So trying to make sure that I'm getting stuff done to be able to take care of her and then also be able to spend time with her because it got to the point where I'm, I'm so focused on making sure I'm providing for her that I was living at work. So it's like, okay, I had to stop, sit down, make a plan, figure out that, as they say in retail, that work-life balance to get that done. And then even at work, I, I, I set a plan, I list out everything I need to do, and I strategically go through that and make it happen. And then again, even in my personal life, for, so for example, back in, I want to say it was 2000, 2014, towards the end of the year, I came down with some mysterious illness that crippled me. Couldn't walk, couldn't use my hands. Yeah, bedridden, lost my job, all of that. So wow. it it kind of catapulted me into a bit of a depression. But where that that the endeavor comes in, it 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 
I felt sorry for myself for a minute, but then I was like, okay, you know what? We're going to make some good use of this time. I'm down. I can't do anything. I can't go anywhere. So that led me to contact my school. So I, I went to Prairie View A&M University. So I reached out to them, explained my situation, I told them I wanted to get back to school to finish my degree. So I started that. They, they made ex- exceptions for me to allow me to do it all online because there were aspects where I was supposed to have to go to the campus. But again, considering my situation, couldn't drive, couldn't walk, couldn't do any of that. Sure. Um, so they made, they made concessions for me and I was able to go back to school online and push through. And it was tough because <laughs> once I got physically and medically better, I was able to go back to work, but then it's work. And then at the time I was really ambitious and took 18 hours. So I, I pushed through that and got my bachelor's in 18, just went back again, finished and got my master's. I actually just graduated wow. again with my master's. Congratulations. <laughs> so it, it still resonates with me to this day in every aspect of my life. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what is your master's in? What did you go back to school for? Business administration. Okay, awesome. And how are you using that now professionally? You oh, no. started your own business. No, I'm st- actually, I'm still in retail and- Oh, you're still in retail. Yes. So you're still endeavoring. You are in retail, you're still a mom, and now you've started a business, yeah. right? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome. So you're doing it all. So tell me about your business. So it's called the Joseph Consulting Firm. It was the brainchild of my best friend of 30 years. Um, her name is Candace. So it was her baby, her brainchild, but we got together and it's basically a consult, it's a a one-stop shop for your everyday business entrepreneur. So we work with, we, we, we will help like your big firms, the people that are established, but then we also want to help the ones who like, I have this great idea for a plan for a business. I have no idea where to start. Okay, cool. Not a problem. Come to us. We can help you with your business plan. We can help you getting um, your LLC established and getting that registered, marketing, social media, retail, all of that. So we have stylists on our team who can help you with makeup, clothing, design. We have audiovisual people who can do your websites for you and your marketing and commercials. We have business coaches, just people to help teach you what you need to know to get through it and everything in between. So that's pretty impressive. You went from not having a business to creating a business with teams of people in all different modalities to help as that one-stop shop. Yes. How did you structure that so that you could make sure you had everything you needed, but also not stretch yourself too thin as a new business resource wise. Right. It's, and it's, it's tough. It, I can honestly say that is something that both Candace and I struggle with because like me, she also has a full-time job. So it's juggling our full-time jobs with the firm to make sure that we can first and foremost market ourselves. So people know we exist. So we've done that, gotten it out there. But then once the name is out there and we start getting clients coming in, making sure that we make time for the clients so we can sit down with them. And like this past year with COVID, of course, that changed how everybody did business. So we did a lot of virtual meetings. There was a lot of meeting in restaurants, in parking lots, in wherever we could just to accommodate our clients. And then truthfully, to just really get our name out there this entire year, everything we've done was free of charge. We didn't charge anybody anything. Oh, my Um, goodness. Yeah, we didn't charge anyone at all this entire year. Because, I mean, and I I know you've seen it, like with COVID hitting, there were so many entrepreneurs came out of the woodwork. Like people, you found out that people could sew who you never knew could sew and people could do hair and people making t-shirts and folks cooking. And it's like, wait a minute, I didn't know you could do that. You're so right. Right. And then it it seems it was like even those people surprised themselves because they were like, wait a minute, I'm actually kind of good at this. So maybe I want this to be my business. So those were the people we were looking to and trying to help. And those are the people we still help to this day and we work with. Now you've had, you know, nine plus months of doing this during this pandemic. How is that going to translate to your plans for 2021? Now that I have the master's, all, of, all of that is, and all I'm looking at it is it's giving me more information, more knowledge um, that I can use to improve my performance at work so I can better understand just the dynamic of 
managing a team. Like you have to be able to manage a team and learn personalities and try to get people to vibe together. And that's definitely the case in retail, but even more so, and I'm learning even that transitions over to here at the firm because it started out with four of us, four or five of us, and we knew each other. So it's, it's, it's me and it's my best friend, Candace, and it's her brother. He's our audio visual guy, Greg, but we all knew each other. And then there was a uh, Sharita, there was Osha. We all knew each other, but then as we, as our name got out there, the, the services we started needing to be offered expanded. So then we had to bring on more people. So now we have people that none of us know, and we have to learn their personality and how we can all work together. So that's the plan is I'm going to continue to I'm gonna use my degree, what I've learned <laughs> and to help the team here, because that's going to like, for example, that's my area of expertise is HR managing team stuff like that. So I'm just going to use that to help to continue to grow the firm and then just continue to work with my team in my full-time job as well. Wow. That's awesome. Now, are you going to continue to offer those free services for new entrepreneurs or how are you guys adjusting that? That's Cause what, this is going to go out. You're talking about offering free services. I think you're going to get a lot of phone calls. Right? <laughs> so, that's, Let's set the record straight on that. <laughs> right, like, Let's talk about that right now. <laughs> so we are in talks about that ironically we have been discussing that like okay what are we gonna do how are we gonna change that up so it may be something where it's a promotion like a two-for-one type service or three for one or a buy two services get one free that type of thing so that's what we have yeah. to figure out because at the same time we still realize we're still in the midst of this pandemic and there are still a lot of people who are not working and don't have so any source of income or the money they do have, they have to hold on to it just to live. So we understand that. And we're very cognizant of that. So there may be depending, and it honestly, it, I can honestly say it'll be a case by case basis, truthfully. It'll turn into like a scholarship program for a new entrepreneurs exactly. probably, right? Something like that, right. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love how you're really looking outside the box because yes. that's what entrepreneurs need to be able to do. Exactly. You need to have right best practices, structures, processes in place, but you've got also, also got to be able to pivot really yes. well. <laughs> yes. And if the pandemic has taught us nothing, it has taught us that if we can move and change with grace yes. through mm -hmm. anything, even if we're not sure what the heck we're <laughs> right. doing, we'll probably end up ahead of the game in the, yep. at, you know, when it all comes out. And that's watch. what we're going for. <laughs> we're trying to help people learn how to pivot because a lot of a lot of people don't and that was something that I've discovered throughout this year and then with us being in the firm and helping people is change scares a lot of people and it kind of sometimes it is weird for some people change is that catalyst that they need to to challenge themselves to move forward and see if they can get through it but then for other people change sets their feet in cement and they can't move forward, they can't break free, it's like they shut down. So that's what we want to do. We want to help them understand how to pivot and change and not let that change scare you so much that you don't do anything. Yeah, it's like that fight, flight, or freeze. Yes. I exactly. think that comes into place for sure. Yes. Now I have to ask you a question. How have you been able to have an entire team of people working for free for a year and still be in business? How have you made that magic happen? Because it's a huge contribution, but I mean, you guys got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, that's where the thing is, first and foremost, everyone on the team has full-time jobs. So they have jobs outside of the firm. And then the other part is we honestly, we're just upfront with everybody like, okay, hey, so this is what we want to do your talent we need as part of this team. We can't pay you right now, but the way you make money with us is for every client that you bring in, that's for you. Whatever payment is, or whatever payment services they that they need from you and you offer, that's on you. You set up your structure because quite a few of our team members actually have their own businesses as well. So we have a team, it's, it's, it's like we're a team, but it's a team of CEOs. So if we have people who have styling businesses, hair, makeup artists, music, t-shirts. So it's a little bit of everything. So everyone is cool with, they honestly, we didn't have any issues. One day we were up, like I said, we were up front and told them, this is what it is. This is what we're doing. This is how you get paid. 
And once we did that, everybody was fine with it. That's awesome. Yeah. You did it in communication. You yeah. were straight up with people from the mm -hmm. beginning. From the no beginning surprises. Beginning. No surprises. So when they all. said yes, they knew what they were saying yes to. Exactly. And it wasn't any place for like animosity or annoyance or right. disappointment. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yes. yes. That's huge. I've, I've learned that that's, now, it, it, that's the key point. It's just like in relationships. Communication is a big thing. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Now I got to ask, because you said that you, uh, a couple times, you said that you started the business with your BFF, that you've been friends forever, Candace. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you guys decide that you would be a good fit to be in business and take that friendship to a new level? It's, we, Candace and I have an unusual friendship. Like we're not if you look at, if you were to see us together and, and, and hear us interact, you wouldn't think, wow, they're best friends. For me and Candace, it, we connected in sixth grade quite by happenstance. We realized that we literally had every class together because <laughs> we were looking at our schedules and we'd go from class to class and we'd walk in like the first class we walked in and was like, Hey, how are you? Hey. And then the bell rang and we went to the next class and I walked in and she was sitting there. I was like, Hey, what are you doing? She's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. We got two classes together. And then we went to the third class. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? So we sat down and we looked at our schedules and sure enough, sixth grade year, we had all of our classes together. We thought cool. it was a fluke. Yeah, we thought yeah. it was a fluke. Seventh grade, exact same thing. Really? Yes. <laughs> we didn't request it. We didn't plan it that way. It just happened. Yeah. And yeah. we just kind of gravitated toward each other because I was your stereotypical nerd, had the thick Coke bottle glasses, wore the pigtails. <laughs> I was I was straight A's and everything. I was that kid that cried if she got a B. <laughs> I was that kid, yeah. And Candace was to me like, and we've talked about it. Like to me, she was like the the ambassador of the school because the the middle school we went to was in a neighborhood that she lived in. Like I got bust in because I was in the magnet program. So I wasn't familiar with that neighborhood. I wasn't part of that neighborhood, but she was. So everybody knew her and I'm like, okay, she's kind of popular. I'm like, I'm a nerd. And then she kind of liked, she gravitated towards me. And she's like, you're cool. I'm like, really? Cause it's kind of like, wow. The prom queen thinks that I'm cool and I'm the nerd wow. I can with the cool kids. So- That doesn't <laughs> happen. <laughs> Uh, we 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 just it was natural it was it was natural and we hung out we stuck together through middle school we physically got separated the four years in high school because again she went to the high school in her neighborhood and I went to the high school in the neighborhood that I lived in but we still kept in touch so I was still going to her house and hanging out and she was coming to my house and we were going to movies and stuff like that college we went we both went to college together same school we were sweet mates and then we pledge together. So we, we were sorority sisters. She is my daughter's godmother. So it's, it's like every facet of our life is connected. Every phase, yeah. yeah. It, it's connected. Yeah. And she's been there with me through the bad times and the good times. And I've been there with her and for her. And it just seems natural. Like we, tr we're, for me, she's the sister I never had because I'm the only girl. So she's the sister I never had. And I trust her with my life. And she, I'm just another sister for her because she has sisters and she trusts me with her. Now that I know your relationship and how <laughs> it progressed, I wouldn't even have bothered asking that question. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and a lot of people, they don't realize they're like, we keep saying like 30 years and some folks think we're exaggerating. I'm like, no, we, we really meant 1990, sixth grade, Ryan Middle School. That's where this started. Wow. That's awesome. It's so great that you have that kind of relationship in your lives for each other. Yes. And it's clear that what you chose to do as your business is to make a difference for, for other people. people. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And I love that. That's, that's how you're expressing your friendship yes. out in the world. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you are a, I noticed on your license plate that you have a Dallas Cowboy frame. Yes, I, I am a football fan. Anybody that's familiar with football and follows it, back in the 80s and 90s, we, Houston, we did have a football team. We had the Houston Oilers. It was during the Love Your Blue days. So we had Warren Moon and I was about to say Refrigerator Perry, but it's not Refrigerator Perry. It was, oh my God, his name is on the tip of my tongue. But yeah, we had those guys. So 
avid football fan back then. Plus, it did it helped that my mom at the time worked. She worked at AT and T, and her boss would always give us tickets to go to the games, and we got to get sit up in the suites in the box seats. So we, my mom took us to, and me and my younger brother to every game. So we're sitting up there stuffing ourselves with hot dogs and popcorn and sodas, and we're watching the football game. So <clears throat> fast forward a few years, the Oilers left Houston. I believe it was Bum Phillips. He took them out, and they went to, if I remember correctly, is what they went to Tennessee. So at that time, we didn't have a football team. So the only Texas football teams were the Oilers and the Cowboys. So like most everybody else in Houston, we gravitated towards the Cowboys. So you became a Cowboys fan. And that's where I stayed. And then <clears throat> we got the Texans. And everybody was like, well, Brandy, you should have became a Texans fan when they came back. I'm like, no, because see, to me, that's being a bandwagon fan. Like, I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. By this time, we had been with the, Cow the Cowboys had been our team for, I think, about 10 years or so. So I'm like, I got 10 years in the Cowboys fan game. I'm like, no, I'm not leaving my boys. And, and I like, I'm diehard. I said, you saw the license plate frame on the front. I have the floor mats inside. I have the sticker that goes across the windshield. I have the Oh, flag. wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am true Cowboys fan. That's awesome. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about being a single mom. I was raised by a single mom mm -hmm. as well. So I have quite an affection for parents that have to figure yes. it out, do it on your own, no matter what. How was that for you? <sighs> okay. So. Cause your daughter's older now, right? She she's, is, is she in college yes, yet? She just turned 19 okay. this past November. So she's 19. Um, still trying to figure out what she wants to major in. Cause she's kind of all over the place. So right now it's a toss up between architecture, following me into business and then culinary arts. So that's where wow, she that's is. Wow, that's a diverse choice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But she likes all of them. She just doesn't know which way to go. But raising her, so <laughs> is the, the funny story. Funny story. I had no clue I was pregnant. So it's when I tell the story, I tell folks like I remember it like it was yesterday. I was at work. It was like a Friday afternoon. I was at work. Um having really bad stomach pain. So I'm like, okay, maybe I ate something wrong or I drank something and it's just food poisoning. That was my thought. That was food poisoning. So my boss came in to close that night and like, I'm at the register, I'm doubled over in pain. Like I can't even stand up straight. And she's like, okay, go home. So she sent me home. I get home and I let my mom know and I'm curled up on the couch. I'm like in pain, I'm sweating. I'm like, I don't know what it is. She's like, okay, I don't like this. We're going to the ER. So we go to the ER that Friday night. They stick, they take me, take blood, do urine, all that good stuff. They come back with the diagnosis. You have a UTI. So they give me medication for that. Give me some Vicodin for the pain. And they send me home. <clears throat> About like five, six o'clock the next day. So it's Saturday morning now. Pain is still intense. We don't know what's going on. The pain pills aren't working. Nothing's working. So then my mom's like, okay, we're going back. So here we go back to the ER. And they're like, all right, well, let's figure this out. We're going to get you in. We're going to do an examination. We're going to check your pelvis, find out what's happening. So they get me in the room and the doctor starts pressing on my stomach. You know, when they're doing the pelvic, he's pressing on my stomach. And then he's like, okay, well, let me, we're going to check, see what's going on down there. I'm like, okay, cool. And they get me in position and he steps back and he looks down at the floor and he looks at me and then he kind of raises the sheet to look down there and he drops the sheet, walks out the room. What is going on? That's so, not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> now, bear in mind, I'm like 21 years old. I don't know what's happening. So the next thing, he sends a nurse back in there. She comes to the room, goes to the phone that's up on the wall pushes some numbers. We need a room in L and D stack. She hangs up the phone. Nobody's saying anything to me. So <clears throat> I'm like, what L and D? And she looked at me like I just suddenly sprouted two heads. And she was like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. What's L and D? She's like, it's labor and delivery. I was like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Why are you taking me up there? And she's like, because you're pregnant. I'm like, no, why not? <laughs> We just, we're going back and forth and back and forth. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not pregnant. She's like, well, what makes you say that? I'm like, I don't look pregnant. Do I look pregnant to you? She was like, well, no, you don't. I can see. There you go. Nope. 
They roll me upstairs. And a few hours later, here comes five pounds, seven ounce Brianna. <laughs> yeah. We were how, the, do, you, do they know how far along you were? They said I was full term. You were full term yeah. and she was only five pounds and you had no idea. No clue. No clue. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't have, and that's of course, then it starts the third degree with all the doctors and the nurses. Okay, well, why didn't you get prenatal care? I didn't know I was pregnant. So why would I get prenatal care? I didn't have the strange cravings that I always hear pregnant women talk about. I didn't have the morning sickness. I didn't have, like, I know I heard with pregnant women, like they get sensitive to smells and certain smells will make them sick. I didn't have any of that. Didn't show, didn't gain weight, didn't nothing, <laughs> nothing. So it was That's like, a mystery. Yes, it is. <laughs> we have no clue. The only thing, <clears throat> the only way the doctor that, that delivered her, he was like, the only thing I can think of is that you just kept her sleep the entire nine months because you were so active. You never slowed down. And then he was like, she rode high in my stomach. So that would probably be the reason why I didn't show because she rode up high, like right under my breast. So I'm like, okay. And he was like, that's probably why she never kicked and never did anything. And I was like, okay. So you're telling me I got a baby now. He was like, yeah, here she is. I'm like, you oh. didn't have any time to get used to the idea to prep to have diapers at home. None, none. And you it lived at home with your mom at the time? Yeah, yeah. Because I, by that time, I had I'd actually already withdrawn from school my first go around because my mom had been sick. So I withdrew mm. from school and moved back to Houston to take care of her. So we were we had, okay. we got a house, but we were living together. So she was better by then. She had gotten better, but then again, I just wasn't at the point to be able to go back to school. And then sure comes my mom. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> and they were like, I was, I was, my room that weekend was a revolving door. Like it, people were in and I, cause the, everybody had heard about it in the hospital. By the time I had her, everybody in the hospital from different floors, from e ER, I'm like, everybody was coming in asking questions. Like, how did you not know? I'm like, well, I, I didn't know. <laughs> like, I just didn't know. And then I think they discharged us. Sun, no, they kept us because they wanted to make, because she was so small, they just wanted to make sure. So they ran a lot of tests, made sure she was okay. They were going to discharge us that Monday because I had her that Saturday night and they were going to discharge us on Monday. So the nurse came in and she was like, okay, mom, we got our baby ready and we're ready to let you guys go. And I was like, okay, cool. So I have packed up my stuff and I'm holding out my arms for her to give me the baby. And she's holding her. She, she's looking around. I was like, what? She said, where's your car seat? I was like, I don't have one. She's like, mom. I was like, yes. <laughs> she said, yeah, legally, we can't let you leave the hospital without a car seat to put the baby in. And you're like, when did you think I was going to Walmart? Exactly. Like, I've been sitting here the whole time. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And like, I'm like, and I looked at my mom. I'm like, mama? She's like, Brandon, just give me a bank card. And and because where the hospital we were in, there was a baby's R Us right down the street. She's like, just give me your bank card and I'll go get the stuff. I was like, okay. <laughs> so she had to go buy a stroller, car seat, diaper bag, clothes, like literally everything. You didn't even have a baby shower for people no. to give you all the stuff no. you'd need. No, because <laughs> I didn't know. Oh my gosh. I had no clue. And then once I got yeah. home, it was letting my family know. And nobody believed me. None of, no, none of my family believed me because we had just had a family reunion in. So I had her in November. We had just had a family reunion in September. So it's so wait, hot. They didn't believe that you didn't know or they didn't believe that you had had a baby? They didn't believe I had a baby because I was, yeah, oh, wow. I was a good girl. <laughs> I was a good girl. <laughs> oh, that's yes. right. That's right. Straight no, A's. Nerd. Right. I forgot. I was the nerd. <laughs> I, I didn't. Yes. I was a good girl. And. It's all Candace's fault, right? Because she introduced you to the fun Which crowd. Funny because <laughs> my mom did not want me and Candace to be friends. <laughs> she did not. In the beginning, she just swore up and down. Candace was going to have me on the road to robbing banks and stealing cars and all of that craziness. <laughs> but they, none of my family, because, and like I said, we, I had her in November. In September, we had had a family reunion. So, you know, it's Texas. It's hot. 
So I'm in short shorts. I got a little t-shirt on. I don't look like I'm pregnant. So when I started telling the family, nobody believed me. And then my house became a revolving door because then everybody was like, okay, we got to come see this. So everybody started coming through and then it was like, oh my God, you had a baby. Well, duh, that's what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> so it was, it was interesting. It wasn't, I, I can honestly say it wasn't too difficult because before Brianna came along, I actually had been taking care of a niece and a nephew at different points when they were babies. So it started when they were babies. So I was used to the 2 and 3 a.m. feedings and not sleeping through the night and, and dirty diapers and, and feeding and teething and temper to the terrible twos. And I was used to all of that. So by the time I had Brianna, I was like, it's a surprise. Let me get past the surprise. <laughs> but I just jumped right into it and because I was used to it. And everybody was like, well, no, 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 it's different. I said, no, the only difference is now it's my child I'm taking care of. And I can't send her to nobody at the end of the day when I'm sick of her crying. Like I have to deal with her now. Right. She's mine. Exactly. She's with me. But yeah. it was it it was trying. It was trying. I can honestly say that because I really got to see. Like I even told my mom because there's three of me, three of me, three of us. I have it's me, and then I have a younger brother and an older brother. And my mom raised the three of us. And I had to tell her, I'm like, I don't know how you did that with three kids. I'm like. One is, is giving me the blues because then you have to learn about, I had to learn about schools and shots and what she had to have and what she couldn't have. And then understand like as she grew, learning how she learned and understanding how she comprehended things and trying to help her and the personality. And yeah, it was, whew, <laughs> it was, it was a lesson in patience. So I, I still say it to this day, I give much much credit and props to people who have multiple children and they do it on their own because I don't know how I don't know how they did but it's she, we, we got through it together <laughs> we had a few hiccups along the way but for the most part we did well she was she for the most part she's the spitting image of me just looks just like me acts like me school she's into it I mean some of her likes and interests are different like I don't understand why you're into that it makes no sense but other than that, it was amazing. It's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. They kept wanting me to change her name to either Miracle or Blessing. And I'm like, yeah, no, we're not doing mm. that. <laughs> we're not doing that. No, she's going to have a normal name. I'm not setting her up to be ridiculed and bullied. So I'm like, no, she's going to have a normal <laughs> name. But we, I, I, enjoy, I can honestly say I enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So I want to just talk about one more thing before we wrap up, which is just any advice that you have. You know, you've been working with entrepreneurs, new people who didn't ever plan to be entrepreneurs, but have sort of had to figure out how to make money because it's been a very weird year. We got this new year, 2021. What wisdom can you impart? <clears throat> one thing I've learned a lot in dealing with entrepreneurs is they have a tendency to wait until it's perfect. Like the timing is perfect. The plan is perfect. Everything is perfect. If you wait for everything to be perfect, you will never get started. Start. That's all I can say is just start it and you can figure it out as you go. You can perfect it as you go. Because we didn't, we, things weren't ideal for us when we started. Like we didn't have an idea of a team and what we were going to do and how we were going to do. We just had the, the blueprint. We kind of had a skeleton and then we went from there. So that's my advice. I can just say, just be patient, be fair, and don't be scared. And, and definitely don't work, wait for perfection because there's no such thing. <laughs> None of us are perfect. That's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing some advice and wisdom for people like that. Anything else, any final words that you want to say about anything we've talked about or anything we didn't <laughs> talk about? <laughs> I enjoyed this. I can honestly say I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm just, I think like a lot of people, I'm just looking forward to 2021 and hoping that, because I know at the beginning of 2020, everybody was, everybody was like, 2020 is my year. This is going to be a great year. We're going to do so many things. It's going to be awesome. And then COVID hit. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, you aren't leaving. <laughs> right? Like you're not going anywhere. But then still, we got to, we have to find our small successes and we have to celebrate no matter how big, no matter how small. So even what, like with us here at the firm, we didn't think it, but we have a suite. 
We have a suite of offices. We never thought we would do that, but we did it during COVID, not charging people for anything. So it's- That's amazing. <laughs> that, is all, that is all inspiring. So don't, yes. don't talk yourself out. Just, I, I, I would encourage everybody to go into 2021 with the same enthusiasm and high spirits and, and good, good mojo that we would, we came into 2020 with. Just, just go there. We know this has been a tough year, but it's going to get better. It, it's going to get better. I am a firm believer in that it will get better. Yeah. And I'm going to just underline something that you said and tease it out a little bit, which was you got to really be willing to look at your small wins and take mm -hmm. credit for every win, no matter how big or how small, because yep. it's the wins that get us the confidence to keep going yes. Yes. when we feel like, is it worth it? So I would say if, if you, this is something I'll add in, if you haven't done this yet, take stock of everything you've accomplished in 2020. Yes. It's probably Absolutely. more than you realize. And that includes <laughs> your resilience. That yes. includes your willingness to do things that were uncomfortable. Awesome. Well, I always like to turn the tables before we wrap up and ask you if you have a question you'd like to ask me. So do you have a question you'd like to ask? Nothing to ask, but I will say that I love your energy. Like it is, it is amazing. It's contagious. <laughs> and I think your energy and your enthusiasm is what made me so comfortable and at ease. So I can oh, honestly so say, but that's the truth. I like, I can honestly say you made this like this, this is only my second. Well, if you count our pre-interview, this is only my <laughs> third time doing this. So okay. it's, you made it effortless. Like it's, it was actually fun. I actually enjoyed it. So I had no questions for you, but just a comment and compliment of thank uh, you for making it you. so fun and effortless and enjoyable. Oh, that's so sweet. My pleasure. I really appreciate you saying that. You know, what's really funny that you say that is that when we were talking this whole way through this conversation and we're just laughing and having a great time, I'm like, this is all your energy. Like you are just so open and sweet okay. and happy that I'm just having such a blast. I'm laughing all the way through. So what okay. you're seeing in me is me reflecting back at you. So that's my compliment right back at you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I've so enjoyed our conversation, Brandy. Thank you so much for being on. Oh, no problem at all. I hope you continue to stay safe. Thank you, you too. All righty. Well, I'm gonna have a go great day. And you do the same. All right. Bye. All right, bye. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Trista's Plate Story Podcast. Please subscribe to Trista's Plate Story Podcast to get the story behind all those vanity plates driving with you on the road. And if you would like to nominate the owner of a license plate, including you, or visit any of our partners and sponsors, come and see us at platestory.com. That's P-L number eight story.com and give us the details. If you enjoyed this episode, please drop a review and give us a share. I'm Trista Polo wishing you well on the road to your next adventure.